A bucket and some bleach. That's all it takes. But well, my wife and I were looking to adopt one and then two boys named Michael and Habakkuk from Liberia, West Africa. And in 2009, as we were hoping to adopt those boys, we, we heard that Liberia had closed to adoption. And we thought, well, that'll just be a short time. But uh, then we heard that Habakkuk, the younger of the two, about two and a half years old, that he, was, uh, he had malaria. And then he, I heard he had started to get better. But then, weakened by malaria, uh, he died of dirty drinking water through something called cholera, and he died on June 30th, 2009. And, and Peggy felt like that can't be the end of the story. And so uh, we had a memorial service in our backyard, and Peggy, it was just like, that can't be the end of the story. Death isn't the final word. And so she led the way on uh, raising the $7,000 it was going to take to put in a, a new clean water well uh, in his village called Peleteyama. And so, the well went in before the rainy season the next year, and, uh, and we watched the slideshow on it, and, and she said, uh, yeah, I should have been there, next time I'm going to be there. And in October 2010, she went, and she took her trip, and she came back, and she said, uh, you know, they need money for a school. They, they can't read the inscription at the well, they need a school. And so, March of 2011, we both went to Liberia. During that trip, we went to Pelatiyama, but we also went to several other villages. And we saw village after village after village with no clean drinking water. And when we asked the people there, what is your highest need? They said, we, we need clean water. Our children are dying. And so we realized that what was happening in Pelatiyama, what had happened to our little boy, was not an isolated situation at all, but was happening throughout the entire country, where the leading cause of death is um, from waterborne illnesses and malaria. And so on that trip, Mark and I and our friend in Liberia, Pastor Peter Flomo, started an organization called Teamwork Africa. Teamwork Africa's goal is to work through churches in Liberia to meet physical, spiritual, and social needs of their community. And we want to see the people in Liberia seeing God meet their needs through their local churches. And so together um, with Peter, we have 15 pastors that work with us throughout the central area of Liberia to bring clean water, um, to bring education and medical care. Um, we do microfinance program and child sponsorship. We're trying to reach as many people as we can through the local churches because we believe that the people in Liberia, the leaders there, know the right thing to do. They just lack the resources to be able to do it. So with partnership with our friends here in the U.S., we're trying to help our friends in Liberia to meet the needs of their people. We're brothers in the war-torn land Left without a mother or father And way too young to understand then a family learned of their story A family from America They filed the paperwork for adopting These two boys from Liberia But the adoption moved too slowly Habakkuk became ill While battling with malaria He would soon grow weaker still From contaminated water Cholera claimed the boy And there would be no happy ending No family filled with joy is there a way to get cool, clean water from down in the ground? To stop the dying of the little children in every village and town? My fingers are cold. So this family sought an answer 
So no more children would die from contaminated waters. And their father heard their cry from the lack of cool, clean water to many families in war. The loss of sons and daughters and teamwork Africa was born. There was a way to get cool, clean water from down in the ground. To stop the dying of the living children in every village and town. If a seed is planted in the ground, it grows till the harvest comes. And from the So now in village after village, hope has finally come from new wells of cool, clean water and living water from the sun. There is a way to get cool, clean water from down in the ground to stop the dying. daughter Evelyn we're planning to go back to Liberia in August and September to help start a school called Great King Academy uh, and even this summer our co-founder of Teamwork Africa Peter Flomo was here and he went back July 10th but uh, as uh, late Jul July turned into August uh, the Ebola outbreak was worse and worse in Liberia and uh, Peggy was on the phone with Peter one day and, and what can we do and Peter had the idea of the buckets that they would uh, for $15 or less that, that we could provide five gallon buckets with a spigot and some bleach, and that's where hand washing uh, could be a difference maker, and it has been, as some 3,000 buckets have been provided. So when, when uh, I was talking to Peter at the end of July, talking about whether or not I could come in August, and he said, it's not safe, you can't come, school's been canceled, and then we started talking about what the role of Teamwork Africa and what the role of our pastors was during crisis like this, and that's when Peter came up with the bucket idea, and we've, we've been able to distribute all of those buckets that have gone out, and in all of those families that have gotten buckets, we've only had two cases of Ebola within those communities. But before the buckets got there, we two of our starfish children contracted Ebola and their families, and we lost both of them. And also during that time, we had two nurses that were working with our program. And one of those nurses' name is Nancy Saki, and she's one of our pastor's wives. She worked at Phoebe Hospital, and she got Ebola. And uh, she was in medical treatment, and we were just praying desperately for her survival. But she didn't make it either. She was the primary breadwinner for her family. She and her husband took care of 10 of their grandchildren, including um, also her elderly mother-in-law. Those 10 kids and her husband were in quarantine for 21 days. So the other side effect of the Ebola is the family that's left behind in quarantine. And without the support of their neighbors and families, they have no food or no water 
no medicine for 21 days. So besides giving them buckets, we've also started providing food and medical support for those families in quarantine. And again, it's about $15 per person for those 21 days. And we've been able to also give out dozens of families um, the medicine and food that they need during those times of quarantine. By the grace of God, George Saki and his 10 grandchildren did not contract Ebola from his wife. And his wife mother-in-law. And his mother-in-law. And they, and they survived the quarantine and, and they're healthy today. Uh, but they wouldn't have been without the support of Teamwork Africa providing them food during the time of that quarantine. So Teamwork Africa is working hard to meet the needs in Liberia. As much as we've done already, there's so much more to do. Pastor Peter in Liberia gets calls every day from communities saying, please bring buckets to us. So if you would just join with us and help provide those buckets to the people in Liberia, you really can make a difference for a family.
Well, Patty wrote the words, but you figured out the music, so you probably subconsciously copied it. But we were thinking about it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Just, uh, just give me a hard time. Bar. Soar up to the sky and kiss this crazy world of life for a while. Float up high above the trees and feel the gentle blowing breeze for a while. Oh yeah, for a while and be on free for a while. Check and 
And shortly thereafter, we saw a little picture of a boy named Michael. And if you see even his picture, uh, it's up right here, but his picture in back, the posters uh, we've got somewhere, his picture, he's got a backer shirt on, so we're properly clothing. So uh -huh. anyhow, the fact is that uh, we, we knew right away, it's like that, yeah, we want to adapt, this is the boy. And then, unfortunately, in January 2009, Liberia closed to adoption, so I know we felt like, well, that will probably be just a short time. Unfortunately, even to today, people still ask, how's the adoption going? Well, we, he's still not here, okay? And so, they have passed the child welfare bill, but anyhow, they still are not actually doing adoption. So, but, but it was January 2009, and they closed to adoption, but shortly thereafter, they said, Michael has a younger brother named Habakkuk. Would you like to adopt him? So we prayed about it. We got approved for it. And that was all. And i tell you what, I found in our family, at least, like men and women experience that differently. Because for me, I was just like, okay, so there's a second boy we're willing to adopt if we ever can from Liberia. But my wife really internalized it deeper. And so in March of that year, we heard that Habakkuk had malaria. And it was, and it's pretty common there. You can get it. And, and then I heard later that he was getting better. But then in June of 2009, he went back to a little village that he's from, uh, and called Pelitayama, and he contracted uh, cholera through the dirty drinking water. And on June 30th, 2009, little two and a half year old Habakkuk died of cholera. So now our family had a memorial service led by my wife, and we all wrote things, and there was music, and we released balloons. But for Peggy, she just felt like that, that can't be the end of the story, you know? And so we found what would it take to put a clean water well in his village so that nobody would die from dirty drinking water. And so the price was really high, way higher than it's been ever since. It was $7,000. So she really had not had an interest in fundraising, but now she had a reason to be. And so by God's grace, we raised the necessary funds. The well went in before the, the rainy season the next spring. And then when we saw the slideshow of the well being dedicated that May on a Friday night, Peggy strongly, she's like, you know, we sh I should have been there. She said, next time I'm going to be there, and I didn't argue with her. And uh, that's why this Friday we'll celebrate 16 years of marriage. So anyhow, no, no one to hold them, no one to know. And so, uh, so then uh, she went in October 2010, and that was a big deal. I mean, your wife's going to Africa, and neither of us have been there. I've been to Mexico for a week, but not, you know, Africa. And so she was going to Africa for about, you know, a week or a little more. And uh, she had a rough trip, but she get, did get there. And, uh, and when she came back, you know, she found out on that trip that she was able to go to that village, see the well, meet the people. She loves that village. She calls it her village, Belly Dayum. But they can't... Because they're not educated, they couldn't read the inscription by the well. So a teacher by training, she came back and said, she found out what does it take to put a school in it. She found out it would cost even less than the well. And more than half of that price would cost to put, uh, build a house for the teacher, 3,600 bucks. So she came back and she baked more cookies than she ever had and raised $1,000 in cookies that Christmas. And uh, lo and behold, five months later, March of 2011, we both went. And uh, part of that trip was we met Peter Flomo. And so you can see Peter there. And, uh, you know, a couple years later, when, when I, a year and a half later, when I went to some guys, uh, a doctor from Sacred Heart Hospital, Claire, and, and some other fellas, they, end up, they said, he's like a Liberian Moses. So he's uh, gifted and called. And, and so we met in a missionary house in the jungle by candlelight and hatched the idea of Teamwork Africa. Now, Peter gets all the credit for coming up with that name. But the idea was it would meet the spiritual, physical, and social needs of the people through the local church. And in Liberia, particularly into these villages. And, and here we sit. Here we sit three and a half years later where by the amazing grace of the one true living God, the God of the Bible, is the only way I can explain that there's more than 200 new wells or well repairs that have gone in into village after village after village after village. You know, from the tears that were spilled, there's a song that was sung by the group earlier, Pete and Deb Kay, and they did a song called Cool Clean Water, and 
really out of Habakkuk's life and those tears have come and, and his death from dirty drinking water has come so much clean water and now in so many villages, village after village, they become known as the villages where the kids don't die. And that's a beautiful thing. And, and, and so other things were offshoots of that, not only clean water, but with it all the time, it's, it's the gospel in clean water, the gospel in clean water, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came into the world, you know, to live the one true good life and ultimately die on the cross and, and spill his blood, you know, for the sins of all humanity. And, and so to bring that message, but, but it's not just to bring spiritual freedom, it's to bring, to meet physical needs, because you can't say, hey, here's the gospel. When I was there in March of 2011, people got saved, but then you can't say, hey, good luck with the dirty drinking water. You just can't say that. And so Teamwork Africa is the gospel and good works. It's the free gift of eternal spiritual life, which you can also have. You've got to meet your physical needs. And so there's been the drinking water, the, the clean wells, and the well repairs. We have a partner in the last well that they match us. If we raise 1500 for a new well, they match us. Uh, you can do well repairs for a little a more affordable price. And beyond that, we've got uh, a Starfish Kids. And we've got more than 100 kids that are sponsored at $50 a month. You can have a half sponsorship at $25. And again, we were at a church recently and got another six to seven, eight kids sponsored. So it's over 100. And it's just kind of amazing. i got to just tell you, there's a verse in the Bible, Zechariah 4, 6, that says, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And that's the only way I can explain. Because there's more to this. There's been what's called the Widow's Oil Project, where we help widows to... Uh, we give them little mini loans, and then they're able to take that money and develop a little micro business and pay the loans back. I got to speak at a dedicate a, a ceremony where we recognized 13 of those widows this past November. We've got something called the Village Transformation Project, for a village called Moses Quaint Town. They're establishing their own piggery, and so uh, some people have been sponsoring them at about $500 a month or something. And and so it's just really. I gotta tell you, a lot of times for me, you remember the old Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial? And it's, uh, hey, we do chicken right, okay? So don't talk to us about a hamburger. And so basically, I'm kind of like, wow, shouldn't we kind of focus? But it's been more multi. It's, it's just, what are you gonna cut? It's like if you got eight kids, I mean, which one are you gonna let go of? So um, it's been an exciting ride. More recently, though, to bring this down, uh, is Peggy and our oldest daughter, Evelyn, we're supposed to go to Liberia this August for three weeks. But all of a sudden, when the Ebola outbreak happened in late July and early August, the, the word, I mean, certainly it was breaking out, right? And over there, we were hearing about it. And the word from our partner, Peter, he's like, no, it's not safe for you to come. And obviously now, nobody's going to Ebola. And, and it's been surreal to live out the last two months and hear... I mean, we'd heard about Ebola earlier in the year, but to hear it now, everybody's hearing about Ebola. And, and we talk about Liberia, but even after talking about it in Eau Claire and on the radio, many times people would get it confused with Libya. And, you know, whatever. And it's like, all of a sudden now, I mean, last couple of months, Ebola and Liberia, they're topping newscast after newscast and on the front page and everywhere you go. So it's been crazy. It's been bizarre. It's been very sad. The tears continue. We have to say that in a nation that they had a 14-year civil war from 1989 to 2003 with hundreds of thousands of people dying and talking to the people, they still have the, they're still trying to rebuild from that. Liberia had had a thriving middle class in the middle of the 80s, but this war just destroyed their country. And, and now to have our partner Peter recently tell Peggy that actually this is no, no comparison. She asked him recently, because we were speaking at a church in Abbotsford, what's worse, with the war or Ebola? And, and they actually said, he said, there's no, no comparison. Ebola is far worse. Because in the war, there'd be time, you knew who your enemy was. You had someone about you, and there'd be breaks in the gunfire. You, you knew at least the market could be open. But, but now, you, you could, your own mother could get you Ebola. I mean, you just don't know where death could be around the corner. And so this culture of gregariousness, this culture of friendliness and their own special handshake, they can't even touch each other. 
And so uh, we've known some of the sadness through some two of our starfish kids and some other people we've been involved with who have died from Ebola. And yet, just in conclusion, one of the things that we've been involved with and uh, it has been the Buckets campaign and even the Buckets and Beyond campaign. And it's been basically for $15 to get people, up, you can bring it up, uh, uh, a bucket with a spigot and, uh, and some bleach. And they've been able to uh, wash their hands. We have a, a friend named Wayne Merrick. He works at Mayo Health System. And he's been to Ghana on an annual basis. And he said, he told us well in advance of this, if, if they would just wash their hands, it could cut down half of their illnesses. And we found out subsequently that that by, this has been very effective, and it's estimated that we've been able to, we've raised really over 30,000 in what's now called the Buckets and Beyond campaign. And about 3,000 buckets have been distributed, and, and it provides hope, because people are like, you know, an elderly lady, one story is like an elderly lady who thought she was just gonna be left to die. But then it's like, no, we remembered you, and here's a bucket with a spigot and, and bleach so you can wash your hands. So, in a nutshell, that's what Teamwork Africa is all about, meeting spiritual, physical, and social needs through the local church. In the name of Jesus. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions about what we're doing or just interested in more about why, what's going on there, especially in Bolivia? Group, so. <laughs> Sometimes people wonder why in Liberia you can't just wash your hands. And if you don't have indoor plumbing, and you don't have a sink, and you don't have clean water, it's impossible to wash your hands. And so this bucket with a spigot on it, those pictures kind of show you actually the, the people that we have over there, they went, they, they're smart. So they, they, if you buy the bucket in the market, it's $15, but they went to the distributor and bought the buckets and the spigots separately so that when they, they're making the buckets themselves and then they buy the bleach and, um, and put it all together and just giving it out to families in the community. And so it's reaching so many people. And I think Mark might have mentioned that of the families that we know of that's received buckets, only two families have had a case of Ebola in their household. And in both of those cases, it was someone that was exposed to Ebola before they came to live with them. And so, although we have lost two children and their families and two nurses, as soon as our communities and our families got buckets, we have not had another case of Ebola. So this is something extremely practical, is extremely effective, and it's something simple that we can do. Who doesn't have an extra 15 bucks? I mean, I think it costs probably $30 to go to McDonald's for our family. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, it's just simple, and it's, it's making a huge difference. Um, the, I have a box of gloves I found up here too. You wouldn't believe it, but if you go to a medical clinic in Liberia, the nurse that will treat you doesn't even have gloves to wear. And the, the number of nurses and doctors that have been infected by this is just astronomical. There's right now estimated at 70,000 people per doctor in Monrovia. That's like all of Eau Claire and, and Altoona. Yeah. One doctor for the whole city. And so it, 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 most of the clinics are just shut down altogether because the nurses, if the administrative, an administration can't guarantee that their staff are gonna be safe, they just told people to stay home. And so we actually were able to work with another organization and sent a container of food and medical supplies um, to Liberia to help with our, we have two clinics that we work with um, and they're not treating Ebola. <laughs> they're treating things like malaria and and uh, one of the clinics is just delivering babies because all of those other things that people would normally go to the doctor for, they can't get any treatment because all the clinics are closed. And so there's a lot of people who are sick and really suffering, not just because of Ebola, but because there's no medical services anywhere anymore. And, and so this has been in the news, it's been really big here, and a lot of people are afraid of Ebola coming to our country and our communities. But if we don't stop Ebola in Liberia, it's gonna spread around the world. We have to go to the source of this problem. It's something that's doable. We can contain it. We can um, solve this problem. But we have to do it, and we have to do it quickly. So thank you for being here and, and hearing about this. Sharing, share with other people.
what we're doing. There's a lot of flyers. We have a stack of them. And just let people know that if you're scared or frustrated or wondering what you can do to make a difference, it's really simple. So you can um, send a check or donate online, and I'm happy to answer any of the questions you've got. So thanks. So much waste in our government. True. Bucket and some bleach. That's all it takes. Yep.